Welcome to FinTech Brews and News, brought to you by Central Payments and Falls FinTech. I'm Nikki Rohde. And I'm Trent Sorby. Founders, co-founders, payments professionals, and, well, just people who love brews. This is a place to get a behind the scenes look at unique partnerships and ways to bridge the financial gap between banking, startups, and the entire FinTech industry. Whether it's a beer or coffee or something else, there's certain to be a brew in every episode. After all, how do we function in this space without it? Each episode, you're sure to take away some good stuff going on in the financial technology space. So without further ado, let's grab a brew. Hey guys, welcome to FinTech Brews and News. Uh, I'm Nikki Rohde. And I'm Trent Sorby. And you might notice something very different today. Look at how nerdy Trent looks in his This headphones. is a sign that FinTech Brews has reached some level of Something. importance now because now we actually look like podcasters. Now. Well, and it gives me more ammo to make fun of you about. I so know. I'm grateful for that. The nice thing is I can mute you out of my ear and it's silent. Mm. And so this is, I may just wear these around the office now. Maybe a good idea. Yeah. Well, with that also, um, today you're branching out a smidge on your beer choice because you're usually that light lager kind of guy. I am. What are you I am. So uh, I'm responsible for this. So this is Spotted Cow. And Spotted Cow can really, as to my knowledge, can only be bought in Wisconsin. And I was in Wisconsin recently, sent a text back to South Dakota and said, who wants Spotted Cow? And I ended up bringing back a truckload of it. So uh, we are enjoying Spotted Cow. Cheers, to, Cheers you. to you. This is a very exciting episode for us for lots of reasons. Um, I'm going to start by introducing our guest. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Ijaz Anwar. Uh, Ijaz is the COO and co-founder of PayActive. Um, and we're gonna let him talk about PayActive in a second, but i um, super excited to have a jazz on. He is, a, he is an absolutely on the forefront of product development around the concept of early access to wages. And uh, we, are, uh, we are very excited to have him. Um, PayActive is, is a longtime client here at Central Payments. Um, I remember when I first met a jazz and they were working on this idea and I said, look, we want to support that. And, uh, and since then, uh, it's been so great watching everything that's going on at PayActive. So a jazz, wel- welcome to the podcast today. We really are so excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. And uh, thank you for the invitation. So a jazz, take us back nine years. Um, give us the story on PayActive and, and what what brings you here today and, and talk a little bit about the problems that, that you uh, have been working to solve and, and all the exciting things going on. Thank you. So uh, the story, like most startups have a very compelling story or interesting story, the genesis of PayActive really goes back to almost 10 to 12 years. And uh, the problem that we started to solve was, you know, I, I'm going to try to describe it the best way is like the tale of two cities. And what do I mean by that? You have uh, in the US uh, 70, 80 million individuals uh, that are living paycheck to paycheck. Um, this term has been used, maybe abused many times. Uh, and they earn every day, but they get paid typically every two weeks. They do not have savings and a lot of them do not have access to credit. So the concept that people really fail to understand in solving this problem is there's a difference between income and liquidity. These are very two different concepts. So in order to really understand what PayActive is doing, you really have to understand the difference between income and liquidity. Just like in businesses, most businesses fail not because they don't have income, they fail because they don't have liquidity. Cash flow uh, is the the real uh, challenge. So when these 70 to 80 million individuals uh, that live paycheck to paycheck and they do not have savings, and we can get into the reason why they don't have savings, that's a completely separate discussion or topic. When they need access to funds between paychecks because life is happening in real time and they do not have savings, and they do not have access to credit. Income arrives every two weeks. It is a batch process. Life is happening in real time. So what we realized was 
uh, almost nine years ago, uh, or the thing what the world missed, uh, and our CEO really identified this problem, that billions of dollars are being spent by these individuals in fees for predatory products predominantly that solve a small dollar amount need between paychecks. So the, 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 the realization was that on one side of the equation, you have 70 to 80 million people struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, um, getting paid every two weeks, uh, but struggling between paychecks. On the other side of the equation, they are employed and they earn every day and the employer actually owes them those, those funds because you earn every day, you get paid every two weeks. And when you get paid, it is two weeks in arrears. So there was a big disconnect between these two ecosystems. That's what I call the tale of two cities. On one city, people are struggling, living paycheck to paycheck borrowing, getting exposed to predatory products, paying billions of dollars in fees. Just to give you some context, in 2021, it is estimated that $255 billion will be paid in predatory fees for products and services that address a small dollar need between paychecks. $255 billion. While the money is sitting on the employee's balance sheets because it's a liability that is accruing every single day as people earn. It's just that the payroll is a batch process. Now, why is payroll a batch process is a separate discussion, but it is a batch process today. And changing that legacy platforms, that industry is not that easy. So we saw an opportunity and said, okay, there's a, there is a problem on this side and there's an opportunity on the other side. How do we build a bridge between the two instead of coming up with a new credit product and another algorithm to underwrite and give credit, we said, why don't we work with the employers and give employees what is rightfully theirs on demand and on a voluntary basis. And that's the genesis of earn wage access, that be active working with the employer basically is facilitating access to earned unpaid income never unearned income in collaboration with the employer and it is on demand and it is on a voluntary basis so you just walk us through so much about this podcast um, has been about the founder experience and uh and, and the challenges quite honestly of the founder experience what did pay active look like uh nine years ago in terms of where how many um some of these stories are great and i think i think you uh You've come so far in such a short period of time. Give us a sense of the, the growth at PayActive um, during such a relatively short period of time. Sure. So no, now that we have kind of identified the problem that we are solving and then we embarked on solving the problem, that's the commitment that the founders made after identifying an issue and saying, okay, we are going to commit to solve it. The very first thing is you need some investors to support you. So we are very, very fortunate uh, that we had very supporting investors and continue to have very supporting investors. Uh, the founder's journey is a painful one like most com most most startups have. Uh, when you come up with a disruptive idea uh, that is going to make a macro change in society, it is very challenging because you have to change mindsets, correct? So, so we thought uh, it is such a compelling uh, value proposition, it'll be very easy. Uh, and, you know, people will be just signing up and we'll be, you know, getting a lot of traction that obviously did not happen. Uh, because when you when we went to the employers and started to talk to them initially, uh, this is going back eight, nine years ago, and explaining to them that your employees are struggling, they're living paycheck to paycheck, and, and you, you have the money that they need, can you accelerate disbursement of payroll? And they looked at us like, you know, we are some aliens. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, they we've, should, always, we've always done it this way, Jazz. Like, what are you saying? Yeah, yeah. We've always done it this way. They should have saved. They are irresponsible. Uh, you know, administratively, this is going to be very difficult. Uh, and, and because it's a human story, because uh, there is struggle uh, that is illustrated among these paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck employees, they did give us a listening ear, I must admit. Uh, but they did not take the next step. 
uh, which is basically we, we'll do something about it because we had a solution for them to implement but they listened to the story but it, it really did not get much traction uh, like most startups you go to friends and family you beg you plead and <laughs> you ask them to can you please implement it it makes sense don't worry about uh, you know any of the fees or anything else let's try it out and you know initially it was friends and family people that we knew who uh, implemented the product and to no one's surprise the usage was amazing uh, the feedback from the employees was amazing they were thankful they were grateful i mean i still remember some of the initial implementations that we did uh, i've seen grown men and this is not a you know sexist statement but i've seen grown men cry uh, uh, had tears in their eyes when 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 they realized that for a very very nominal fee they can get access to what is rightfully theirs versus going to you know predatory lenders and paying exuberant fees and and compromising their dignity and 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 dealing with collections and calls like it was it was like a no brainer so the feedback was really good from a user's perspective uh, getting the employers to sign up was very difficult uh, and remained difficult for an extended period of time. So, you know, we always used to call it, it was a missionary sale. Uh, you go, you have to educate, you have to explain, you have to talk, you have to convince. It's not, okay, I've illustrated a problem, please sign and let's solve a problem. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. You have to convince people. It's a, it's a mindset change, which took years. Well, and Jazz, just to jump in there real quick, I, I think it's wonderful that you guys have been so missional focused in a few things about your vision that I took away um, in just learning more about PayActive is um, security, dignity, and savings to millions of America's uh, Americans, excuse me, that are experiencing that financial stress. So it, it was that kind of the linchpin when you started to get some early adopters was more on that mission focus. No, I think I think this the, in the journey of earn wage access, and we'll discuss this a little bit later on. You know, now we are not an earn wage access company alone. That's just one of the features that we have. We have a financial wellness platform. So dignity savings came a little bit later. In the beginning, we were just earn wage access focused. What really helped to get the traction was, I think, support from our investors and us being stubborn and not giving up. Uh, and and really, I mean, it, it is it is a difficult journey. I, I commend uh, other founders or people that start companies and then finally succeed. It is it is a long, taxing journey that you go through, uh, especially when you bring in disruption. When you replicate something and 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 copy and scale, that's different. But when you really disrupt, innovate, and create something new, uh, is you know we call it the 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 price of leadership. Uh, that you pay when you invent something it is easy others to replicate and scale that's a different skill set uh, but to really at ground zero innovate and start on a PowerPoint and then start talking to people uh, it's 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 I won't say painful but it, it takes time it takes energy and you need all the breaks you can get uh, and there's luck there is hard work you must solve a problem and when all of these things come together, you know, you start to get traction. We did a, uh, we did an episode of FinTech Brews uh, where we talked a lot about the founder experience and the stress on founders and, and really the mental health of founders. And I oftentimes think about what it was probably like in the early days at, at PayActive when, to your point, you had a PowerPoint and you had a disruptive um, product that... I think everybody understands, and you were probably, I'm sure, very passionate about the need for the product and the disruption, but you are up against processes that have been in place for decades, and you're saying, hey, let's just flip that on its ear and do it differently. Um, that's a challenge. And so I can only imagine, you know, I always think about the what you probably went through in those early days uh, for something that you felt so passionate about that that it just took probably longer to get traction um, than what you anticipated, just like I'm sure that's the case with, with most fintech founders. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, uh, I completely agree with you. And I think I, I keep reiterating or repeating, you know, very fortunate to have great founders, uh, the initial team, founders and other employees, uh, you know, that took a chance, stayed with us because you are cash flow constrained. 
uh, in the beginning. You're not you're not paying uh, what the market pays uh, in salary. So you you have people that believe in you that want to support you. Friends and family work with you uh, to make it successful. So everybody everybody contributes, and then investors. I, I cannot I cannot emphasize enough uh, having the right investors to support you, who believe in you, who take a, ch- take a chance in you. Um, when you're not having traction and you're running out of funds and you need to do another round uh, because they believe in you in the long term, they support you uh, and they they keep they take the risk and you know that's the, it's 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 amazing. Uh, we we I always tell my other two founders, you know, we are so fortunate. Um, I think the statistically the stage that we are in, uh, I think we are in the ninth year of our journey. I think only one and a half percent of startups uh, sustain at this stage, correct? Where we are, so we are very fortunate in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. So what what are a few next steps for Pay Active? What are, what's on your roadmap for this year and maybe the next one or two? I, I think the earn wage access, uh, I wouldn't say has been commoditized. I think it has been accepted uh, at this point um, by by it has it has become a um, a benefit that by default uh, companies and uh, human resource departments and uh, benefit uh, individuals are talking about and embracing. Uh, what Pay Active at this point is really what we are focused on is the journey. Uh, what else beyond earn wage access can we do? So I, I don't want to I don't want to discount the importance of earn wage access. It is a gating solution. It is still solving a very, very important problem because we have a macroeconomic problem in the U.S. The 70 to 80 million people, uh, contrary to conventional wisdom, that oh my God, they're not they're irresponsible and they 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 they're not saving uh, because they're frivolous. That's not true. Uh, if you look at the macroeconomic situation over the past 30 years. Uh, income adjusted for inflation has disproportionately not increased versus cost of living. Uh, and, and that has made this, uh, this segment of the society um, that is not earning enough, they are barely able to meet necessities of life. Uh, and there is not much to save, correct? Uh, so so I, I just want to make sure that people understand that earned wage access is not a uh, is not something that trend, is transient unless the macroeconomic situation is not addressed. Uh, people will be cash flow constrained. People will need uh, funds uh, when when they need them, which is basically when, when life happens. What we have done, be active is at this point we are looking beyond on wage access. You know that disruption has taken place. It is scaling. There are I think twenty four to twenty five companies in the U S alone that today provide on wage access. And on, I guess on that point, Jazz, you're right. I mean, there is a market understanding and acceptance of the of the product, and frankly, all the flavors of the product. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to your point, 25 companies that are doing this um, in some form, uh, and and with that, uh, you know, y- you were very much in the forefront, and I know firsthand the degree to which Pay Active wanted to make sure that the product, the end product, um, was still good for the consumer and was doing right by the consumer. And I know that's been very important to you. Talk a little bit about the proactiveness um, that you've done um, with regulatory agencies and legislators and all those sorts of things to make sure that you know, when they think about earned wage access, particularly now that there are more and more providers, and frankly, you know, there are providers that um, probably don't take the same approach that you have taken over these years. Talk a little bit about the work you've doing to make sure that Pay Active and the product you you always can say is is doing well by the consumer. Yeah. So yeah. So absolutely. So first first and foremost, we you know a lot of people claim they invented earned wage access. Pay Active is. The, on the B2B side, you know, the business employment centric on which access, the pay active was the first company. We came up with the transaction construct. We did the regulatory work, state and federal, and came up with something that is today called on which access. Uh, what you have really touched upon is the DNA of pay active. We are a social impact centric company. Uh, it comes very naturally to us. Uh, our culture, 
our focus on user impact is in our DNA. Uh, that is something that our CEO, Safwan, uh, emphasizes, reinforces every single day. We are a public benefit corporation, which is uh, something that you have to go to your board and get approved and then refile your articles of incorporation. And we are also a certified B Corp. What that basically means is that we put our users' best interest ahead of our self-interest. Uh, we do not make decisions that benefit us at the expense of our user. If our user benefits, we should benefit. We are not a non-for-profit company, but we will never benefit ourselves at the expense of the user. So when you have that culture, mindset, DNA, you know, most things I would say become very easy because it's very natural. So what, what regulators look for? Consumer protection, that you're not harming the user, you're benefiting the user. Uh, so, so from the very beginning, we have been impact centric. Uh, so we, we embrace regulation. We were the first ones that introduced SB 472 in California. It did not pass for multiplicity of reasons, uh, including COVID uh, that, that happened. But we were the first ones to introduce state legislation. We were the first ones to work with CFPB under Richard Cordray, uh, under his administration, to talk about proactively um, on wage access. And I think there was, a, there was a reference to on wage access in the prepaid rule issued by CFPB under Richard Cordray. And then we worked with the Trump administration. And now we work with uh, the current administration as well. So we embrace it. Uh, and we are not afraid of it because at the end of the day, it is a much better or viable alternative to other products and services in the marketplace. Just to give you some It's interesting, Nick. Yeah. yeah it, it, I go back to when I first met Ajaz and they first presented uh, the idea of PayActive to Central back in the day. And if you rewind the clock here, we were thinking a lot about, okay, Central Bank as a CDFI, um, CDFI, as, Community Development thank you. Financial I Institution. Don't want to over welcome acro- audience. Thank you. Don't, mm-hmm. I don't want to over acronym. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the reasons Central Bank created Central Payments or we created Central Payments was really around extending the reach of a CDFI, building products that were good for consumers more broadly than, uh, than what we could um, in Kansas City specifically. Jazz was one of the very first examples. Pact was really one of the very first examples I took back to the bank. I said, now this is, this is a great example of the things that we can support. Um, we had a tagline for a long time that said, treat each customer's balance as though that's all they have. That's right. Um, and that was really a function, I think, of the early relationship we had with the folks at PayActive that, um, you know, it was, it was a reinforcement. It was an early reinforcement in our life cycle that uh, a CDFI, a... B Corp um, could socially come, responsible. Thank you. Partner, yeah. Could come together and and bring their own expertise and create a product that, frankly, um, I, I would argue is still pretty unmatched in the marketplace. Uh, so it's it's been a it's been wonderful um, the way the two companies have sort of, to some degree, grown up together. Well, and wouldn't you say when we were first establishing Falls FinTech, it was companies like. Pay active that you had tucked away in your mind of, boy, it, the way he had to go through these troughs and valleys of different tribulations. Frankly, it was like, how can we smooth that out for startups? Pay active was probably one of those in in the forefront of your mind. Absolutely, no question. Yeah. So, Jazz, one thing I'm thinking about is, okay, so you did friends, family. That was kind of your starting point. Maybe one of your early adopters, a non friends and family company. Yeah. Can you talk about their uh, journey and maybe a success story or two that's come out of an early adopting yeah, yeah. partner so, or employer? So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so so the first, I think, uh, what I would call a material employer, and I'm trying to be sensitive to the name because of confidentiality and all those yeah. things, uh, was a hospital system uh, out of Louisiana. Uh, I would not say that it came through a traditional sales cycle. There was still some some favors asked uh, to to get that account, uh, and it was a large enough. Uh, and we implemented uh, uh, earned wage access there, and we had few other financial wellness services in it, but predominantly it was earned wage access. 
And what was really surprising, and this is where the story gets really interesting. Yes, we understand the human impact. We understand the challenges of paycheck to paycheck and, and cash constraint and all those things. That's obvious at this point. But why would business uh, embrace it? Uh, yes, there are businesses that are progressive, socially progressive. But, you know, most businesses, you need to have a business case. You need to have an ROI to, to prioritize uh, an initiative. Uh, or to get a support of an initiative. So we, and when we implemented uh, Earn Wage Access at this hospital, what we did some studies after three to six months and found out that turnover among employees is a voluntary service. So when you compare the employees that use the service versus the employees that do not use the service, there was almost a 27% improvement in turnover or retention for the employees that use the service versus the employees that did not use the service. So now we had a business case in addition to the human impact um, that we were making. And then we started to use that to talk to businesses and we started to get more traction uh, because businesses saw, okay, it helps employees, it also helps. Uh, and I'm not saying that the businesses were all about the business case, but businesses have processes, they have other priorities, so you have to have some kind of an ROI to justify implementation of a product like this. So that really was our first break uh, that we got where we started to realize a positive impact on business. And then we started to use those uh, case studies uh, to talk to the employers and get more traction. Yeah, makes a ton of sense. So why do you need central payments for audience who might be listening that don't understand the partnership and the matchup? What role does central payments play for you all? Uh, Two critical roles, uh, if you really think about uh, central payments. Number one, we have we are a program manager. That may be a technical term for people that don't, don't understand program management. So we have a PayActive branded Visa prepaid card. And Central Payment or Central Bank of Kansas City is the issuer uh, of that card program. So we have a pay card program. We have a debit card, original purpose, reloadable pay card program, and so forth. So. They are the issuer uh, of that program, so you have to work with them, uh, with an issuer to, to be able to issue a, a card as a program manager. The more important thing is the role of the card in earn wage access. Card is the only option through which employees can get completely free earn wage access. So if our user does direct deposit, and we do not have a minimum on the direct deposit on our card, they can get unlimited, unrestricted, instant earn wage access on the pay active issued debit card or prepaid card. Uh, and that is only possible because of our relationship with CBKC. So if you really think about it, yes, you're a program manager, yes, yeah, we have, they are the issuer, but really if you go one layer down, if you think about earn wage access in the long term, it has to be something that employees do not have to pay for. And that is only possible because of the interchange income from the card on a combination of earn wage access on a card that is issued in collaboration with central payments and CVKC. So they play a very critical role in that in that sense, very much aligned with, yeah, we can talk about the regulatory side, we can talk about the network side. Yeah, those are hygiene things. Yes, those need to happen. But really at the end of the day, as a social impact centric business, the one option that is completely free for our users is if you do a direct deposit on our card, there is no minimum, you can get earn wage access completely free. Jazz, if you, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention to you that uh, we need to call attention to this relationship. Uh, we we are very happy uh, to announce that we we have renewed our uh, relationship with PayActive. Can you talk so about that? You can, we will be partners for a number of years into the future. Um, I don't know what my team would do if they weren't talking to PayActive folks uh, on the phone or on a Zoom call, um, pretty much on a daily basis. And uh, I give. Ajaz and his team a ton of credit for their creativity, um, their patience, uh, and the degree to which the two groups, I mean, frankly, they just like to work together. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
that makes contract renewals um, a pretty easy process because uh, no one wants to start over if they can help it. And, uh, and we get it, you get into a rhythm and we see that. I mean, we approve thousands and thousands of marketing materials every year and a large percentage of them are coming from our friends at PayActive. Uh, and I'm watching the folks at PayActive send our marketing review people you know, bouquets of flowers and treats and just little expressions of thank you for going the extra mile. Um, and it really goes both ways. Uh, and so uh, we're not the easiest of, of bank partners, I'm sure, and, and they're not the easiest of clients. But I think if you understand where everybody comes from, uh, you, you, can't, you can't really imagine not working together. Yeah, I think I'd like to lean into that cultural element for just a second. And Ijaz, if you talk about the elements of central payments that you guys are aligned with or in sync with, that might have helped drive your choice into who your issuing bank was going to be, who your program manager was going to be. But obviously now they're or walk in the talk and all the things and up for renewal, of course. So what is the culture alignment? Why did you choose to partner with central payments? You know, if you can break it down into two pieces, one is product service pricing and one is relationship. You have to be competitive. We are a social impact business. So, so you have to be competitive and aggressive, I would say, in your commercial terms to do business with us. It's not because oh, we are self-centered. Uh, we are a social impact business. We charge the least. I mean, most of the time, employers, when we work with them, the question that they raise is, too good to be true, where's the catch? How do you make money? Kind of a question, correct? Because it's all about the user, you know, making sure that the value proposition for the user is so compelling. And because we go through the business, the employer's uh, reputation is also on the line to bring in a service provider like PayActive. So we are very sensitive to pricing. So going back to working with Central Payments or CPKC, commercially, obviously you have to be competitive. Feature functionality, product, you have this hygiene, you have to provide those. What really is the difference is you work with people you like, respect, and enjoy working with. You can have difficult discussions comfortably, you can have good discussions comfortably. So it's really, that's, that's the big difference. It's relationship. Uh, who do you like? Who do you like to work with? Uh, and who do you foresee working with? You know, when there are challenges, you can ask for favors. You ask for flexibility uh, and so forth. So that, that takes time to build, correct? And, and I think we are at that level, making sure that commercially they are a viable partner. But the layer on top of that is really... You work with people you enjoy working with. Well, first off, cheers to you and your team um, uh, and, and many, many months uh, ahead as we continue to do great things together. Thank you. Oh, Let's, he still has a thought. Hold on. Well, yeah, I still have a thought. I always still have a thought. Always. Um, Jez, oh. one of the things um, that we uh, get to do as your partner issuer is uh, defend your program to our friends in the regulatory agencies. Um, we find it, uh, and it's never easy, but we love to put PayActive out there um, as someone really on the forefront of this issue, doing right by the consumer. Now with more and more entrants coming into the space, the market acceptance you were talking about, um, the, the probability that you know, you either going to face more regulation or at least going to have to talk about more regulation um, in the months to come. How important is it to to really put some best practices out there um, and then try to bring the rest of the industry along to say, look, folks, um, we need to think about this from an industry standpoint um, because this product is too important to be, you know, sort of squelched by, you know, regulation that could be preventable if we all just sort of lived by, you know, a basic set of, of values and, and best practices. Yeah, so, so you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very valid and a good question. The fact of the matter is this product has been now in the market for eight, nine years, and I would say billions, not millions, billions are being transacted. It's a new transaction type. Uh, it is neither payroll nor credit, uh, and it cannot continue without regulation, correct? So that's, that's uh, common sense would dictate that when you're dealing with consumers, you're moving money in billions of dollars, you need regulation. That's why we, we have always embraced, we are a social impact centric company, so we were never afraid of regulation, but we also had the foresight uh, to understand that 
uh, when you transact at the, this level, you can't just be in what I would call, you know, la la land, just do whatever you want to do. Um, the, the other thing is just a few more points. You know, we did, we do a lot of surveys. We have access to transaction data for our users. Just to give you some perspective, and this is why I think regulators also, to some extent, accept um, on-page access. 30% of our users have a overdraft and or a predatory fee in their bank account on a monthly basis, 30%, amounting to average of $110 per month, correct? So now, I, I still remember when we were doing SB 472, this is legislation, not regulation. Uh, and you have to go in front of the committees and you have to argue, people are objecting to it and you know you have to just give your position. And I always talked about a very simple comparison. In California, this is a state level discussion, a payday lender, which is licensed, uh, legal, regulated, can give $250, charge $45, and have recourse for their transaction in the event of a default and some penalties and all those things. Earn which access can solve the same problem for $1 or for free on the card. So when you put those things, because we talk about consumer protection and better alternatives, you can't argue, correct? Uh, it's a viable alternative, it's a better alternative what is, what, what is in the marketplace today. Uh, and if somebody can come with a even better solution than earn wage access, great. Nothing wrong with it. It's free market, correct? Uh, people should be able to bring better solutions. Uh, so, so I think people recognize that change is difficult. Uh, change creates friction. Uh, people have a lot of perceptions. It takes time. We share a lot of data with regulators, uh, state and federal. Uh, so they have visibility into the impact into the usage and we feel confident that uh, they will continue to embrace and support uh, what Beactive does. Yeah, I think that's really important to note. And I'd, I'd like to ask about any advice that you'd give to early stage founders, rewind eight, nine years. You know, we have False FinTech, our, our accelerator here under the hood of Central Payments. And we talked to hundreds of fintech companies in a given year what is some advice you'd have to be able to sustain to that call it a nine-year mark one and a half percent success rate at this at this point what are some lessons learned I, I think you have to be very brutally honest with yourself that are you really solving a problem or are you drinking your own kool-aid correct that's the foundation if you're not solving a problem not about perception you have to be brutally honest that's number one uh, number or you're disrupting by solving a problem that is meaningful and hopefully can be scaled because scaling is all about marketing. That's a that's a completely different uh, area, but it's meaningful and so forth. Number two, the team. I cannot emphasize how important the team is. Uh, you must have a team that you trust, that you believe in, that you can rely on because it is a physically, emotionally, mentally taxing journey. You need to have a team that will sustain, will support you. There'll be good days, there'll be bad days, there'll be ugly days, correct? And most of the time are challenging days, by the way, every once in a while, you have good days, you should enjoy those. But most of the time it is struggle. Uh, you need to have the team, the right team. Uh, then the third part is investors. Uh, you, have to be, you have to make sure that you have the right investors that really believe in you are not solely focused on an exit and an ROI all the time uh, because not everything works out as planned, correct? Sometimes things accelerate, sometimes things take longer. You need to have the investors that believe in you and support you. So I think these are three critical things. Uh, on top of that, it's about hard work. It is about luck right place at the right time. I'm sure there are people with much better ideas that did not succeed. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, you know, that we wrote some amazing algorithm or we, we, we took Apollo 13 to the moon, you know, we, you know, we, you know, we really, we identified uh, something that people missed and we created a transaction type 
that if you really go into the finance part of it, if you really think what is happening is the factoring transaction, there's a receivable and a payable, and all we are we are doing it, and I'm not discounting on wage access, that is very simple because there is a lot that goes into it. You're liquidating a receivable and a payable on demand on a voluntary basis. Uh, you sound you sound a little bit like Trent who says, we're just moving money, it's simple. <laughs> and the compliance team and everybody else literally wants to stab him because it's just moving money. Yeah, a lot of it uh, in small denominations all the time. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Well, Ijaz, um, I want to thank you, um, not just for joining us on uh, this episode of FinTech Brews and News, but most importantly for your friendship and uh, and the business relationship that we have with PayActive. Um, we enjoy it uh, and, uh, and, and we hold it uh, in very high regard. So yes. thanks for joining us today. Um, Nikki, thank you for uh, joining me today. And giving uh, you a a good beer and trying something um, a little more creative for me um, who knows what'll be next um, for everybody that has a chance to watch uh, you'll be able to read about uh, pay active and their story more in our in our show notes and uh, would just encourage you to follow e jazz and the company uh, on all their social mediums um, because I think it's uh, it's a great story uh, of, of perseverance and and fintech and early stage struggles and and what it can be um, when you when you have all the right pieces like like it appears they have so yeah. and he's really changing the world honestly we have when Trent talked about treating each customer's balance as though it's all they have we've now grown that vision to be making financial experiences better so everything we do and the partners we serve wraps a bow around that idea of just be better and you guys are doing that and doing that really well so i echo that sentiment and say thank you all right until uh next time thanks everybody for joining us today and uh catch up to you again soon cheers thank you bye. bye there you have it we hope you enjoyed this episode of fintech brews and news keep up with all the content and cool stuff happening at falls fintech and central payments by checking out our website our youtube channel linkedin and twitter Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. I'm Nikki Rohde. And I'm Trent Sorby. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.